So yeah, man, let's move on to something that we had spoken about quite some time ago, mm-hmm. almost immediately after it happened. A few weeks after it happened, we were talking about um, the recast of T'Challa character. Um, recently, um, a news article came out about Black Panther fans have p- been petitioning for the recast of the T'Challa character with good reasons as to why they want him to be recast. And and we understand him. This is something that we've spoken about in the past before. It's probably one of our best viewed episodes. Um, listen. The Black Panther character is is not, I I believe, not defined by Chadwick, but he certainly was the first one to deliver a, a character that many, many people were waiting for to see. And it was an event. I believed in it so much that I made bold predictions as to what it was going to do in the box office and it came to pass because it was a huge character and he did it justice. He was fantastic as Black Panther. And unfortunately, due to his passing, you know, people have been sort of wanting the character not to be recast in order to honor him. And which we've said in our previous episode, I'll probably put a um, a link so that you guys can check it out where we made our, um, we, we, we talked about our reasons as to why this character should be recast. I think we made mention of different, like James Bond, you know, uh, references as to, you know, it, this can keep going. And hopefully, I, I, and as you said, Brian, in, in, in previous episodes, this wasn't an announcement that they're not going to recast T'Challa, but they're not going to recast T'Challa for Black Panther 2. Right. So they still hope that they do recast him we'll definitely get a clearer picture after that film comes out. What do you think of the latest developments in that area? Yeah, th- th- this this development is entirely in line, I think, with our thinking, which is the immediate raw emotion of a shock passing, like like Chad with Bozeman's, is you don't want to dive right back into that character. You don't want to touch that right away. And I think in that sense, Marvel's got a time, you know, they have a timetable to meet on Black Panther 2. So it makes a lot of sense. And they want to build out the world of Wakanda, which is a really rich text with a lot of subtext and characters. So it absolutely makes sense that they could move forward with a with a film that doesn't directly involve the Black Panther character, or doesn't directly involve the T'Challa character. You can have the Black Panther, obviously, on another character. But in the long run, this has been our position, my position, that the best way to honor the legacy is to ultimately recast and move forward with T'Challa from the comics on screen with someone else as an actor taking up the mantle. And I think you're seeing now the first signs of the fan, of at least some segment of the fan base coming around on that. I think that's only going to grow. I think it's only going to oh, yeah. grow over time. I think once Black Panther goes up on screen and people enjoy that film, but I guarantee there will be a void in there. There will probably be at the end of it, people will say like, you know what would really build on this nice for Black Panther 3 is now we can bring back T'Challa in some oh, yeah. form, yeah. especially now that the multiverse exists and we can explain it away without dishonoring Chad. Yeah. So to me, everything here is on time and we're yeah. headed toward T'Challa being back part of the MCU, you know, in the long run that Marvel's ready for it. So. Yeah. Again, I'll put that video up in the description so that you guys can check out check out our reaction to um, when they first had announced that they're they they're not going to recast and and why we think they should have or they should recast at some point, not necessarily immediately, but at some point. Check out that video and uh, let us know what you think in the comment section below. 
Um, Alfred Molina confirms his uh, participation in the Spider-Verse film in Spider-Man No Way Home. This, uh, I mean, this is a rumor from some time ago. Um, again, my only concern is, is what story are they going to tell? I'll, I'll put in a description in the link as well as to our conversation regarding that. I, I just don't feel, uh, I don't know what role he's going to play. Obviously, from what I've, from, from what I've read, he is going to be de-aged, right? Um, I don't know what role. I don't know how much time he's going to be given in this film. I'm hoping that, again, it's some sort of end credit scene or mid credit scene or whatever. But there's still a lot of other things that Peter Parker needs to deal with. And that's the story I, I hope that we get to. And at the end of it, I, I hope that Doc Strange to Multiverse of Madness and, and this have some sort of tie in together so that we get an indication to the next iteration of the Spider-Man um, franchise that we get this, you know, Spider-Verse uh, situation happening. What do you think, Brian? Yeah, I thought the, the most interesting thing that he said in his appearance, I believe it was on a podcast, was he said that his return basically picks up right at the moment that he dies in Spider-Man 2. Because he said to do, he said to John Watts, he's like, don't forget, I did drown. Like, I didn't yeah. perish at the end of Spider-Man 2 and was told, no, that's all right, we're, we're going right. <laughs> but then he makes a comment that we're kind of picking up right from that moment, which speaks to the de-aging process. And then he expresses concern over, hey, I'm 67. I can't really do what I did before. And then he kind of jokes. He's like, wait, I didn't do anything. The, the, <laughs> the CGI mechanical arms do everything. So I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I look, I, this goes to all these denials that have been issued around who's in this movie and who's not. We kind of know that everyone's going to wind up in this movie. And, this, and I think Molina kind of references that. He's like, look, isn't this the worst kept secret? He's like, I'm finally just going to say it. I'm, I'm yeah, in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think to your point, we don't know exactly how much, but it didn't sound like a one scene shot to me, like the way he's describing it. It sounds like he's yeah. got at least some kind of a role. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I, I my concern is that they're going to be doing too much. I'm hoping that they're not. I hope that they can drag this out as much as possible in that it makes sense and that it doesn't feel rushed. That's my only concern. Uh, so let us know in the comment section below, what do you think of Alpha Molina confirming? I'm pretty sure everybody, you, you guys knew that this was happening. Uh, I'm wondering what you think in terms of how long uh, of a role he's going to have in this film. And if we're actually going to see a Spider-Verse film in this, in this film, No Way Home, uh, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Now, let's turn to a rumor that has me very excited about uh, the possibility of Disney doing, or Marvel doing a Disney Plus series, an anthology series of Wolverine. Brian, this makes absolute sense. Totally. You get to see Wolverine in different eras. Right? You get to see Wolverine in different situations. If they do this, it only it, it, this will make it so much well worth it because we're not going to see X-Men anytime soon. We're not going to hear the name X-Men anytime soon look how long it took us to get to uh, avengers assemble it's gonna take a it's gonna be a minute before we get to that it'll probably be sped up uh, with the disney plus series and all but we're definitely going to, going to take some time into getting into that point in the mcu my only concern is who are they going to cast again i'm gonna say it 100,000 times Zach McGowan is the guy for Wolverine. Tell me what you think about this rumor about a, a, a Wolverine anthology series on Disney Plus. I mean, this is a 
you know, it, it just it just comes down to do they feel like he's a character that can only be reintroduced on the big screen versus not because or this idea you could play with forever right this is you know we've talked about other you know other shows or other things i mean it's like like, Paris, like assassin's creed the video game and this is Wolverine in any time period in history, right? You can do this forever. He's been yeah. around forever. Yeah. And so you can make these time traveling shows where he's, a, I mean, they're already doing it with Loki, right? In a different way. That's sort of time traveling through the MCU's history. Yeah. This is more time traveling through history, history. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we, I mean, not to invoke substandard films, but we've seen this before. Like, remember in, um, X-Men Origins, like they kind of the opening montage is him kind of going through World War II and yeah. colonial times or whatever. Like, yeah, there's such a fertile ground to basically take the same character and put him through history. Uh, another Islander, another series, right, of this immortal character who we constantly see scenes of through hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah, it's an easy show to put together and have yeah. it be pretty entertaining. Yeah. To your point, as long as you have the right cast member. My only question, like I said, is he considered too big to be brought to small screen before big screen. I tend to think we're past that point, but you never know. Um, you never know how they feel about it. So, and you can make it R-rated doing it this way. Yeah, I, I it just would also be probably necessary. What was that? I think it should be R-rated if they're going to do it. Listen, Wolverine is a an, an, is a killer. He's an assassin. He's he he's he's out there. Yeah. And he's a serious character. I think Marvel has a good track record of, again, bringing these characters to life and and bringing who they are to life. And who Wolverine is, is someone you don't want to mess with. And I think, listen, Hugh Jackman was great as Wolverine. Everybody can agree on that in terms of the look, the his his actual character and who he is, he did a great job. But we can all agree that there was a few things missing here and there, right? To me, he wasn't the greatest fighter. To me, there were just experiences that he didn't go through in the films that really didn't bring out the Wolverine that we all know. I think this is an opportunity to really dive deep into a character like Wolverine and understand who he is. And again, Marvel has done a great job in doing that with a lot of the characters that we've seen on TV and on screen. So I think this is an opportunity to, to reintroduce Wolverine slowly so that people get used to this idea and not see just Hugh Jackman. Cause st people still out there, oh, we wanna, yo, Hugh Jackman is like 60. It's time to move on, my people. It's time to move on. Hugh Jackman will probably get a cameo at best. Leave yeah. it alone. Which is let's great. Move on. Yeah. But like, yeah. I mean, holding on to Hugh Jackman as Wolverine is kind of like holding on to Arnold as a Terminator, right? Like you could, it, there's just a time when that, I mean, the character is immortal, but there comes a time where life, in real life, catches up with <laughs> the performer and it's just not, you're, you're not helping the legacy. Yeah, like continuing to feature that character, and I think Hugh realizes that, right? Oh That's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when he made, made the call. He's yeah, happy yeah. to can He's happy to do the cameo and have fun with that. But I think he realizes, like, he went out with Logan. Like, he's proud of that as his crowning achievement in, in the character. He doesn't need to go back in time and be de-aged and revisit that. And I agree with you. I think the fact that Wolverine does not have the signature Wolverine fight yet on screen is something that needs to be addressed. Yeah. When we're doing a top five superhero fight ranking. He ought to be in there. And oh, he's yeah. not in the top 10, let alone the top five. Exactly. And, you know, we've all never seen the Wolverine suit. What kind of suit he's going to get. All that stuff will be slowly introduced, which is, I think, is, a, is, an, is you got to take advantage of this situation. And the parliament, I think, is on it. <laughs> I think it all depends. What are they? If if they did it, I mean, you could come up with all sorts of hokey gimmicks. I mean, you could literally have. I, I'm just spitballing. You could literally have the character, the actor you intend to portray this going forward. 
you could literally have him sitting in the princess bar at Madripoor, just thinking back. That's the start of the show. He's just flashing back. And the end of the show is literally like he meets someone else and that's the jump off point. Yeah. You're going to do that. That's it. If you want to do 10 episodes of that, who's not watching yeah. 10 episodes of Wolverine reliving his greatest hits? Yeah. yeah. In the, call it the pre X, like the pre X Men. Cause I don't think they would do like a, they're not going to go back to the points of days of futures path or, or like things we've already seen. They wouldn't yeah, yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. revisit that. This would be like Wolverine in the pre X Men days, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Before we move on, I just want to ask you one question. Do you think we'll see? I don't know if you'll agree with me, but I was watching um, the X Men animated series, and I and they, and then you saw the Dark Phoenix. Um, that I think it was a four episode. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the only do, time that that storyline has been done well. Yeah. Do you think we see that again? I don't think Marvel's dumb enough to go right back to that. It's too, it's been done twice. I, yeah. I just, and neither time all that fulfilling, right? I mean, they've kind of fallen flat twice. I think that they'll, there's other things in the X-Men lore that I think you can go to without playing that card. No. And so I think to the extent we see it, I would, I would estimate it's more in the 10 year horizon than like the three to five years. Yeah. 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 I agree with you. I agree with you because I think we'll, we'll get to see it, but just not now. And given the fact that we have the cosmic aspect of it, yeah. we'll most likely get a reference to the Shi'ar empire and all this other stuff. So uh definitely um i don't think that's totally off the table it's just on the side waiting for its turn to get looked at let us know in the comment section below would you want to see wolverine on tv rather than the big screens would you are you are you cool with this anthology series possibly being done on disney plus let us know in the comment section below and for our final topic uh aquaman 2 has cast, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Pilu Asbeck. Yeah, I think that's about right. Been ca- he's been cast as Aquaman too. Now he had a, fa- a great role in, in, in Game of Thrones in that last season. He uh, definitely had a presence, and you can certainly see him as a foe, as a villain in a lot of films. Um, me, quite honestly, not looking forward to. I'm not, 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 not to say I'm looking forward. I'll take that back. I'm not as excited for an Aquaman two film as many others would probably be. But uh, what do you think of this cast? Look, it's only news because we haven't had any news on this project. So, I mean, the only Aquaman universe news has been kind of the elimination of the trench, which I don't think necessarily was a surprise but i think yeah. you know, given that james wan is back directing and uh, well i shouldn't say that the other news we've had has just been around amber heard and kind of is is the, the petition did not have her in it is there any you know anything to that her saying no i'll be in it so that's not really news yet as it, so yeah. the fact that we get a casting kind of means like all right there's some forward motion in the production of this that hasn't been happening for reason yeah. And so I think in theory, they were supposed to aim for a Christmas 2022 is when they're supposed to be aiming for yeah. this, which doesn't yeah. leave them a lot of, which means they got to get shooting, you know, in the next six Two months, months probably. Yeah. So they have enough time to do post on it. So I, yeah, I, I'm a little skeptical. They'll hit that deadline, but I mean, this was, this has literally been the first concrete news we've had on this project. So I know, I know you've been trying to kill the project. <laughs> it will happen, <laughs> but um the question of how good it will be and what the storyline will be and kind of where we go with sort of Black Manta and, and some of the stuff that we left hanging at the end of, of Superman 1, I think will be uh, all, all TBD. But I, yeah. it was just notable because I hadn't even been thinking about this project. And then we saw this headline cross and I was like, oh, okay, we finally have something to talk about here. So, mm, yeah. yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. We don't know what he's doing or like who he's playing yet. So. Most likely, definitely a villain. Uh, it will be interesting to see if they go with the cutting off of the arm and getting that hook in, in Jason Momoa's arm. Because uh, I don't see 
Aquaman three or Aquaman four <laughs> happening. Um, he, I, I'm pretty sure he's getting a hell of a lot of money for this Aquaman two uh, um, um, movie. So we'll see. Um, before we sign off, Brian, any last words? Yeah, we obviously, you know, we didn't we didn't talk about Invincible that much this week because I think it was probably the, the the weakest entry of the series so far. Uh, the, the really only fun development I thought was Art doing the forensics on Omni Man's suit, and now everyone's kind of in the know that he is guilty of the crime. Yeah, um, I didn't find this episode all that compelling. Otherwise, um, the college stuff was kind of slow. I think they're trying to do this coming of age storyline with Mark. And I, I got to be mm -hmm. honest, like I'm not enjoying that as much as his training with his dad, knowing that his dad has a lot of dark secrets that, yeah. that I love. I, yeah, the yeah. college teenage that, that that stuff is not really working for me, to be quite mm -hmm. honest, on this show. So hopefully... Um, this is only eight episodes, by the way. So there's only two left. So hopefully that's setting up the we get back to the sort of the galactic showdown or whatever is coming in sort of parts parts seven and eight. Uh, yeah. My only question for you is he I think this is an animated show. I think he's breaking Charlie Cox's record for most damage taken by a hero in his first <laughs> season in the show because he gets beat. Oh, yeah, every week, single man. time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's just crazy. But one of the things that I find interesting now is um, now that the secret is pretty much out, right? For his, for him, Omni Man, what is he gonna do now? Yeah, right. It seems that he's a bit torn because it's like. <sighs> Does the whatever timetable I had to take over the world or do whatever he was intending on doing, does it get sped up? Um, and like, what sacrifices does he have to make now? Does he murder his wife or, or what is he thinking? Obviously, he's torn because there's a lot to think about. Um, Mark, I think, is realizing that he's going to have to either a be a regular teenager or b be a superhero he can't do both i think he's realizing that he's not going to be able to do both uh, so yeah that storyline i think it is is it's um um fun to watch and also the robot what 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 his intentions are um spoiler um, I think uh, the Immortal Man. I think one of the guys that Omni Man kills is going to be brought back. Yeah. So, uh, and that's in the comics anyway. If you've read the comics, so that's going to be. I, I've never read the comics, but I've been watching some videos on the breakdown of the of the show, and that's going to be definitely something I'm I'm looking forward to see and how he reacts to him being alive and if he remembers some of the stuff that occurred and how he deals with it, as how he deals with Omni Man. Well, they're definitely setting up, as I talked about, they're definitely setting up the the Vader face turn, right? Because when he's sitting out there talking to Art, he's looking up into the sky, you can kind of hear him talking about, like, he's attached, like, he's attached to his family. This the time flew by, like, he wasn't expecting to feel this way. So, yeah. I don't know, this show's been a little unpredictable, so I wouldn't say that it's necessarily a guarantee, but they're definitely hinting at this idea of, He's probably going to carry out whatever his mission is, but in the middle of it, he might not be beyond kind of doing something heroic or something to save his son or save his family or save the planet, um, even if it means sacrificing himself. So I'm kind of still on the lookout for yeah. Omni Man, maybe in the end, not being not being all bad. Yeah, but if you saw that first... He's been doing a lot of bad stuff, though. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a lot of blood on his hands. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, ladies and gentlemen, that's our, joke, our show for today. If you enjoy this show, please hit that like, subscribe button, hit that notification bell, share with your friends. Uh, thank you for the support that you've been giving us, and we'll see you next time on The Nerd Gen Report.